This is something that can be done collaboratively by the ESL teacher and the classroom teacher. So the first thing you'll want to do is log into Brightspace. And for today, I'm just going to be using my little classroom here. It's not, um, it won't show any private student data, no worries. You'll click on the portfolio leaf here and you'll see all of your students listed. So I'm just gonna click on Lisa Simpson today. She has a few pieces of evidence in here. I can choose one of the existing pieces of evidence if it hasn't already been attached to a rubric or I can add another piece of evidence by um, uploading on my phone or on a WRDSB shared iPad or by using a Chromebook. So I'm going to use this sample that just says sample here today. And the first thing I want to do before I attach a rubric is I want to rename this sample so I remember that it will be one that's used with a rubric. Right now it just says sample. If I click on the title, I can change it from sample to summary T1. That stands for summary term one. Now under the word rubrics here, I can click on the button that says add rubric. And this is a primary student, she's in grade two. So I'm going to click on summary report ESL step grade one to three. And I have to scroll down to the bottom and click on add, select, add selected. Once that rubric loads, it might take a few seconds here. I click on the little box with an arrow here that opens it up. And here's where I see my tracking sheet. It looks very similar to the tracking sheets that were paper that we were using last year. So I'll go through here and I'll say where she's at in terms of her oral um, reading and writing. So let's just say she's about here. She's following instructions. She's using pre vocab in simple sentences, expressing personal needs. And if I ever wanted to go in and add some feedback in here, I could type in some feedback. So if I was writing about her using a small range of personal words and phrases, I could say uh, beginning to speak at circle time and to both peers and adults. There we go, and that'll automatically be in there. And I can click off and keep going. And that's really where this collaborative piece comes in. We need to be chatting with each other, with the classroom teacher and the ESL teacher to figure out, okay, where exactly do we want to place this student for the steps? After my teaching partner and I have gone through and we've said, okay, the student's step one here, step one, step two, we've gone through the rubric, we actually go through each section. And so this part here is the oral section of the summary report. And again, we're only doing this at the end of each term, at the end of term one and the end of term two. I'll scroll through and I've noticed that mostly we've ticked off step one and a couple of step two. So we'll say overall their demonstrated oral ESL step level is step two because that's a step that they're on, they're working on. It doesn't mean they have to have completed every single thing in here, but that they're working on step two. I'm going to go down to reading and I've noticed, okay, there's a step two, step one, step one, step one. Okay, so mostly step ones and one step two, this student is working on step two. So I'll click that again, demonstrated ESL reading step is two. So that's like a quick overall summary. And then I'm going down to writing. I see step two, step one, two, two, one. So really still working on step two for writing as well. So I'm going to click on step two for demonstrated writing ESL step. There go. So even though I attached it to a writing sample, you can attach it to any piece of evidence you have. Uh, there we go. And then I just close the dialog box there and it's automatically saved.